Well, welcome back to part three, the final part before we do the maiden on this uh, Dancing Wings PT-17 Stearman from BitGo Hobby. Hopefully you've checked out part one, part two, and now you're back here for part three. Whether you're building this model or you're looking for tips and tricks, stick around. The next step, we're gonna install the rudder and elevator servos. Those will go in the inside. So just look at orientation. The rudder head is further away. The elevator is closer to. We're gonna be using RTL hardware, the servo screws. And again, I like to cycle my servos before I put them in. Um, so that way I know if I'm gonna have any issues. And then after, cause these have been cycling for a little bit, I'll go ahead and those are now centered. So I can look at the position of those um, servo arms and then just try and position like that to get a more neutral setting. So I know I'm going to wind up using the arms in that position instead of the others because they do change. So let's go ahead and mount those into the inside of there and get our uh, pull pull linkage done to the back. All right, guys, it's time to make the windshields, and you'll notice that there's a, a painted side and a smoother side, and although there's no right or wrong way here, my preference was I put the ledged or that rougher side towards the inside, just less likely to get chipped from bugs or bumping it or whatever. So what I actually found was to preform the windshield was the easiest way to do this, and I think it fits better and it'll be a lot easier to install. So let me show you guys how I did that. So again, we're gonna find that ledged side. And what I did here is take a straight edge and I went from the tip there at that corner to the edge of that circle and just kind of split that. And then using finger pressure, just bent and molded this thing like that. And we're gonna do the other side. So we're going from that corner to here like that, and we're gonna roll this thing in like that. And now we wanna go ahead and we wanna insert our tabs and we're gonna roll these to the outside. So literally we're just forming it right at the edge, real simple, and bend them to a 90. Look at that. That's no good. We're going to have to fix that. All right. So let's see how we, uh, what we can do here to glue this tab back on. All right. The joys of modeling. Nothing's without fail. So let's take a little bit of thin CA. A couple drops there. It's a little easier to control. And I'm just gonna dab that thing in it. And we're gonna try and place that right on there and just give it a second to bond. And now I'm just going to take a drop right in along that edge. There you have it. Good as new. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and install these things now. Let's wick that up off of there so we don't put our hand in it by accident. And now we're going to go ahead and install the windshields. I actually think it was easier to look at them from the backside to judge spacing around the canopy. 
and kind of preform everything. And what I did is I just shaped it as necessary uh, to the front when I was pre-checking this out, I guess, if you will, before we shot this clip. Um, I just kind of preformed it to see what I had to do so there was no gap here at the lower portion of the windshield. And it bows it a little bit, but I don't think that's a, a bad look rather than a straight windbreak. It almost looks to be a little bit more aerodynamic that way. We're going to mark them with a Sharpie and then uh, pre-drill, soak with CA and put screws in it. Let's get it fastened. There you go. There you have it. I like the way that looks, and I'm actually liking that little concave in there. And uh, let's go and install our broken one here and see how that fares out. Windshields are installed. This one actually seemed to fit a little closer next to the canopy because the fuselage is changing shape in here. That one's a little wider. None of that bothers me. I'm more worried about how it fits along that edge of that fuselage for support. But um, happy with the way that looks. Let's go on to the next step. Now, something to keep in mind with this motor, there is no thrust built in to anything in this plane. The firewall is exactly centered on the plane. It's even, it's not pushed one way or another. This faceplate is the same dimension all the way around. You have to figure out what the thrust is for um, down and right, all right, to counteract the torque of that motor and the prop wash and everything else. But with that being said, um, this plate has an arrow and no directions to it as to where that goes. It fits the same in every direction. So we're just going to call the arrow up is up. That's probably where I would put that. So they've already marked these spots, which is nice because it's exactly 12, 6, 3 and 9 o'clock. So when you turn this over, all I simply did was I matched up all those holes for center. Um, I guess we can make this one just a hair better. All right, now the nice part about um, this motor is it's going to be the same either way. And the fine dead center of this plate, all I simply have to do is line up all my marks. on those lines so I'm centering all of the lugs mark those spots there and now I always start with a small pilot All right, so that's done. And now we can drill those things to size. And these are the um, bolts that came with it. I'm gonna see if I have anything that may fit in there a little bit better and a little bit longer. Um, but these are the spacers for it. Um, let me go see what I got for bolts. All right, so check it out. Look, RTL to the rescue. So we're gonna take out four of these there that's what i'm using on the inside and we're going to go ahead and drill out these holes those things should all fit right in there now we're just going to put a couple drops of thin CA in there, harden that up.
perfect. Now look at the bling I got. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stick that stuff in there like this. And then we're gonna do this. Don't lose it. Gonna do that there. This here. That there. Then we do spacer, spacer, spacer. It's not a spacer. Do, 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 do. Now. Why did I choose to do my lugs this way and not the other way? Because if I want down and right thrust, all I got to do is put a washer there and a washer there and I get down and right thrust. So the question will be, how much do I need to put in there? Um, let's go ahead and throw some washers and lock nuts on the back of this thing and get this plate installed. So you can see where we are in this process. I only installed two nuts. That's because I need to pull the other two out to slide spacers or shims in there. Um, but I need an accurate base measurement. So it needs to be tight for those two. Um, and then we'll see what we have to do to change it. Now, in order to measure this, I'm actually using an oldie but a goodie. This is my AccuPoint incidence meter. It's a laser that we're using to set this thing up based on that scale. So whether you're setting incidents of wings or down a right thrust of a motor or engine, this is the tool you need. So let me go ahead and get this uh, face plate mounted in there and I'll show you how to make your initial measurements. All right, so you can see we have uh, the motor mounted in there. Two of the bolts are tightened and I'm leaving the ones at one and three o'clock loose so I can put shims in there and pull washers, whatever. Um, I've opted to use blingy hardware on the inside and we're just going to go ahead and throw some Loctite here on the back of that and get this whole motor plate installed. And this is really um, the last big hurrah, if you will, for this model. And again, I'm using Loctite so this stuff won't, won't come loose, especially as it's sitting in there. Um, I'm opting to put that arrow at 12 o'clock, even though that there's no information that I should be doing anything else with it. All right, guys, let's get down to setting our uh, down and right thrust on this. So again, we're looking for roughly two degrees on this setup. And there is a reason why I set my lugs up again, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock and nine o'clock. So the first step is we have to create a level reference line. I threw my level in there on the battery tray and I'm just simply going to use some foam blocks and we're gonna level the plane. And we're gonna look in there on the bubble level. Try and make this as level as possible, which is right about there. Now that the plane is level, we're gonna come around here to the front. And I'm gonna set you there so that way I can work. We can see. Now, understanding the way you're incidence meter works is important. I need to 
this thing's going to wind up turning this motor if I don't find a way to secure it. So I'm just going to use a piece of tape and that should lock that in place. Now we're going to slide this thing over our prop shaft. Tighten this thing down. Now if I had a socket here, I could really squeeze this thing in using a socket. But we want it tight. We don't want it moving around on us. And we want the readings to be true. So that's really good. Now we need to zero our, we need to zero our level. Um, hopefully you guys can see that, but the laser right now is on one. Now on this one, we needed to have our laser 20 inches from here to the back of that beam. And we have a counterweight right here. And all we're gonna do now that the plane is level and the motor is installed generically, is we're just going to adjust this little wheel right there until we can get ourselves and it's pretty finite i mean it works pretty well so we keep coming back to zero right there and i'm pretty happy with that now you need a selection of washers now that we're zeroed out and all I am going to do is I'm going to slide washers in there and position them in and see what effect this has on it now you want to be careful you don't want to disturb the plane a whole lot here and this may be depending on what you're working on kind of a, a tight deal but we'll see what we can do here I'm going to stick this spacer and them washers back into place. We'll try one here first and see how that goes. All right, so if you can see that one washer got us about three quarters of a degree. So let's see if we can get in our second one. All right, so with those two big washers in there, we have uh, a degree and a half. So that tells me that I'm going to need three of those washers in there. Now, here's the cool part, guys, and I'll, I'll actually get you a measurement with a micrometer so we can actually get a real number here in case you want to use your own things. So I know if three of them washers are going to get me two degrees down, I also know that over here to the right hand side three washers there is going to get me two degrees that way so let's go ahead and pull this back off and install uh, my washers in there and find something the right thickness we'll place those shims in there retighten it down and see where we're at so let's go ahead and see what three of those washers is going to get me just using a veneer caliper so 4.35 millimeters on the top and the three o'clock position should get us there. So let me go ahead and pull those out, put them in and see what happens. <laughs> oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Remember that movie, The 18? But anyway, we are exactly two degrees. So the laser pointer is right there. I shimmed here exactly the same as i shimmed up there so if that gave me down that gave me right and i know i'm exactly where i'm supposed to be so now that the motor's in and installed um there's my down and right thrust now if you wanted to go about actually measuring down thrust the same way we have to rotate the plane this way so instead of using my level as a reference point in there on the deck when the fuselage it's on his side you need to find a level spot something as the tail something here whatever wherever you can get this thing the side of the fuselage whatever you got to use that thing has to be level so your fuselage is sideways like this and you hook everything up the exact same way 
Just rotate the plane from here to there. All right, with that being said, the motor is installed. Our thrust is set down and to the right. You're gonna notice that your fake radial engine is also not cut completely to center. So when we go in ahead and install this thing, we wanna make sure that everything fits and that our um, positioning accommodates that down and right thrust. We're just simply gonna use the wood screws wherever we position those. Don't forget, you can harden that from the backside with the CA wherever you position those. And should you happen to need spacers, There we have spacers. That's what's included in the kit. So um, we're pretty much close to out of pieces. We have that left and then we have this thing and they don't tell you what this thing is for in the instructions, but I'm pretty sure that's a battery blocker and I'll show you where I think that goes. So I went ahead and knocked the centers out of these things. Uh, I think we're gonna start with two. We're gonna glue two of those on there and then uh, check to see how the clearance is. And then if we have to, we will add that third. So I wound up using those two spacers and then opted for um, two of these plastic bushings that I had. It just seemed to space everything out better for my application. So we'll slide this thing over. like so. And now we will go ahead and tighten this thing down in the position. See if we can hold it there so you can get a look at it. And that's what we got. So we're gonna put in those three screws on the inside and uh, get this front of this airplane wrapped up. All right, now our uh, dummy engine is installed. If you wanna take the time and dress it up, feel free, go ahead, put on your magnetos, magneto wires or, you could paint the cylinder heads or do whatever. On this one, I'm opting not to at this point. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw that thing on, the washer, the prop, and we're gonna go ahead and tighten this thing down. All right, it, it looked neat if they had a hub or something right here, but you can get hubs. Um, you know, just depends what you like aesthetic wise. To me, that's okay. I mean, believe it or not, I think that's how the uh, actual scale ones look. They just kind of flat nose like that. It's not threaded, but it just has that little center hub that sticks out of there. Um, but either way, everything here is pretty much well done. Um, Realistically, I guess at this point, it's time to get into the inside. Let's get our receiver mounted up and get our ESC programmed. And we have to get it updated before we throw it in there. Um, we're gonna be using again the Scorpion. We're using the Scorpion. So we have um, AMOS 150 anti-sparks to solder onto there. And then we have to solder in, I believe they're probably gonna be four millimeter bullets onto the other end. So let's get to this, get this stuff mounted up. Bullets are all soldered on there. AMOS 150 anti-sparks are all done. Let's go get it programmed. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set up our throws. The throws are in degrees. They're kind of looks to be, this is what we wanna follow. This just looks to be some generic information. I think it's misleading. I think they ought to wipe that out. So I'm gonna go with my CG. We already know we split between 100 to 110. I'm at 105. I like that just to give me an idea. And then it says 25 in each direction, rudders 25, ailerons 20 to 35. So um, 
I think that what we're going to do is maybe do a um, a high rate and a low rate. I like to kind of go with that number and then go to see what else I can get. Um, just with everything set up the way it is right now, we're getting about 28. I'd like to get just a little bit more out of that. In order to get a little bit more throw, all we have to do is disconnect this like I did. And we're actually going to thread this closer up to the surface. And uh, we'll give that a try and see if we can get a little more. All right, so by making that change, again, we went up a little bit closer to the surface. Um, so now I can get roughly 32. So I like that. So I think like a, you know, we gotta, we're gonna kind of bottom it out right there. So we got to adjust that down. But I think I'm gonna do like a 30 and a 25 here on the elevator to adjust those throws. Now, one of the things that I've already learned, it's actually easier to get the canopy in through the front, which I guess the downfall is your hands near the prop. Oh well. But with that that windshield, it's really hard to put in from the back because of the other windshield. But anyway, with that being said, I put two felt tabs right here so that way if I ever change batteries or want to move stuff around, I always know where the CG is without having to find my book. So we have everything roughly just tossed in there. We're using an SMC 5300 and I'll have full telemetry on this plane. So I'll be able to see absolutely everything, including milliamp usage, which will be cool. But if I go ahead and lift this thing up by there, we're pretty much well balanced with that nose weight. And the SMC is pretty light in the front, but we have the motor and everything else hanging out there. And I'll show you guys. We take this off. When I said thrown in there, I meant thrown in there. So anyway, um, we program that ESC. Everything's set up for telemetry. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can't fly stuff that way. But anyway, we're going to start to move things around in there and see what we can set things up. We have the two ailerons that we still have to wire in yet, but I needed to make my leads and stuff um, according to... I needed to make my leads according to where we CG. So everything is kind of where it needs to be, and it's time to go ahead and get stuff set up. Um, the cool thing is, too, here, if you look, that snorkel in the front that I put in and epoxied around there, that thing's actually going to suck some air in and actually push air right down on top of where I want to mount that ESC. So it's actually going to have some uh, ram air cooling, which is going to be kind of neat. But anyway, uh, let's clean stuff up. All right, so as I'm setting up the throws, this was one of my concerns when I built this. This is this is no good. These are the longest arms that came with the uh, included servos, and I was worried that they wouldn't be long enough. You can achieve with them the low end of the aileron recommendation, which is 20 degrees, but you can't get the high end, which is 35. So those are 25 tooth um, servo arms, so we're gonna swap them out with a little bit beefier and some longer ones and see what kind of result we get. So here's my concern with these easy connectors. Um, I've used these before in planes. I haven't used them with these type of nuts that come with the kit. Even though you put Loctite on there, I, I don't trust those that they're gonna stay. And we use them on the elevator and here. And God, if you have a, a slip there, uh, I just don't see this ending well. This is too nice of a model, guys. They, they really did a great job on the model. I don't like... I don't like the um, linkage. I, I don't. I swapped it out with 256 Golden Clevis. It's locked. It's Z-bent. And I went with longer 25 tooth arms. Guys, this, those things ain't going anywhere now. That's rock solid. So I, I'm going to change up this one. I'm going to get the throws that I need. And then I'm going to swap out the one on the elevator as well and see what I could do there. You guys trying to figure out where this thing goes? I believe that this thing is going to glue itself in place if you wanted somewhere like right there against those formers on the side. And I think what that's going to do for you is give a separation of that electronics gear. That's gonna give you separation of that electronics gear and your battery, but I'm not worried about that battery going anywhere and hitting anything. Not only do I have a strap, but I have some really good Velcro in there. So um, for me, I, I don't see a need to put that thing in there. But that being said, if you're looking, that's where it goes. 
if you guys take a look in there, you can see how clean we are now. So the elevator I changed to a Z-Bend. There's our pull-pull connectors, got our battery, our Scorpion Tribunus ESC mounted in there. So I have telemetry and the uh, Rec 7 receiver with color-coordinated connectors. But nice and clean, everything's routed nice. And then we have our Hanson Hobby connector for the ailerons underneath. Turned out really nice. So check this out. Here's the benefit of using Jetty and why I went with that Scorpion ESC. I have my ESC temperature. I have my um, battery voltage in there. I have RPM here. I have my current. I have my antenna reading, so I know strength, and then my milliamp capacity. So this thing is set up on a um, idle up switch. So you can see there, RPM. So I have all the data that I need to check out this plane from one end uh, to the other in case anything ever happens. And that, or, yeah, that includes BEC voltage as well. So um, I gotta set up my voice commands on here yet. And other than that, we're gonna throw on some decals and uh, she's, she's done. Got all my throws set to pretty much what they recommended. Um, we'll have to fly it and I'll give my recommendations afterwards whether I think those are enough or we ought to shoot for more, but definitely made the right decisions in there with uh, the arms. Love it. Ah, it's the last part. Anyway, it's time to get on the decals. So here they are laid out. There's really nothing in the book to describe where anything goes. You can use this one picture for a reference, or if you've saved the box, you can use that one as well. So we have some regular rubbing alcohol and a rag. We'll clean off whatever surfaces lightly first, just to remove any oils and stuff from these babies while we are putting it together. And then here's the funny part, right? So I'm looking over to decals, just trying to get a rough idea where things go. And I'm like, we well, look at this. They forgot the Y, then they forgot the U, and then I'm thinking, how do I make this work? Nah. And then they have a white one in there, and if you look closely, you could see the Y and the U. So they did a nice job here with planning this out because the colors change as they go through different red and white and everything else. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, um, what we're going to do to make straight lines here as we go down the fuse, as you can see the stringers that go down through here, you can go ahead and use that for reference lines, wherever you're gonna put your stuff, or go ahead and lay a string of tape all the way across, so that way all your letters as you drop them on are all in line with each other, and then hopefully you can work on spacing. Now, I will go ahead and spray uh, the plane with my concoction of water, uh, soap, and rubbing alcohol. And basically it's a spray bottle of all water, two drops of Dawn, and like two drops of rubbing alcohol in there to help it evaporate. But um, that way I can work the bubbles out because there are a lot of undulations in here. So don't just stick them on there and call it a day. The ones I'm more worried about are these. Now, if you don't care about bubbles under your decals, then that's all cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, so uh, super excited to get this thing dressed up and uh, get it out to the field. So let's get this thing finished. So here's something I decided to give a try to. Since these aren't like vinyl with transfer tape over them, I used some 3M low-tech uh, scotch tape here. I guess it's scotch low-tech, not really 3M. But anyway, um, I wrap this over the top of it so I can keep the spacing equal so that way we don't have big gap, small gap, you know, things like that with inconsistency. So all I did was place the U over there and now I'm going to go ahead and um, try and transfer that whole row right across. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place this half halfway on and over the top like that. And then this one I'm going to run overlapping of that one and right on the very bottom edge of the stickers. There. Now this is going to keep all my spacing the same. 
and I'm just gonna peel those off like that. Now let's get back over to here. And then once, <clears throat> see if I can not get in the way of the camera here. And I'm just going to use this tape to go right along the bottom side of the other one. Now, the reason I split the tape is because if you're dealing with a big, long decal and you're worried about bubbles, that'll give you the ability to work with it and watch. So you can peel this one off. And why we did it in two layers is so that way you can peel this one off and use the top piece in case it starts to pull your decals. You can go ahead and push them back on. That tape's going to help keep it there. And now you can push the bottom, and when you peel the top, the bottom part of the sticker helps to hold it. Check that out. Decals done easy. It's just plain crazy, baby. guys i hope you enjoyed the build series of the uh, dancing wings pt17 Stearman from bitgo hobbies i really enjoyed this build total time for you guys i think would be 20 to 25 hours on an intermediate level not quite a beginner but definitely not an advanced build um, i think the quality of this plane was very good across the board with the exception the only thumbs down i'm going to give it is for that uh, connecting hardware for the linkage. I think there's better options, but for a couple bucks, I don't think you can go wrong there. I upgraded things to my liking. I did um, bare minimum of upgrading along the way to keep this kit as much as it could be as it came. And then I made sure that it was built right, built sturdy. So it's going to have a lot of successful flights. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed what you watched, like, share, subscribe, all that cool stuff for me. Do me a favor, smash that thumbs up button. It helps out the channel a lot. If you're going to do this one, make sure you smash that baby twice for me. Um, with that being said, it's Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. You guys are just playing crazy for watching. I appreciate every one of you guys. I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.